Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the Solus Inverter Battery Settings. This is a supplementary video intended to show you the alternative uh, settings that might better suit your use case. Um, I'm going to preface this video by pointing out that I am not an electrical engineer. I am not a solar specialist. I'm a mechanical engineer and I have an interest in solar um, for my own personal and financial reasons. I like to share some of these settings as a this is all you need to do kind of a video uh, rather than going into specific details of voltages and outputs and inputs and all that kind of stuff. There are channels on YouTube that will go into that kind of detail. Um, my videos are intended for the I don't have a clue what to do kind of person like myself when I start on these projects and it's just this is what you need to do if these are your circumstances. Um, so there are alternatives here and I'll I'll answer um, a couple of the questions here um, by going through some of the settings uh, in, in this um, menu. So the main settings that I have changed in my setup is um, the way I use my battery. Uh, so rather than the solar charging the battery throughout the day and keeping the battery full, um, I now have any excess solar uh, going to the grid and um, I also changed the timings. So I'm gonna go through the basic settings here first of all, guys. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll explain in detail why in my circumstances I've made those changes. So it might suit some of you. Um, wherever you are in the world, it doesn't really matter, uh, especially if you have EVs and you have um, specific time tariffs where electricity is cheaper or more expensive depending on the time of day. Um, so let me just cover the settings and what needs to be kind of uh, changed. Um, but actually, just before I go in there, I should say that if you have a battery, particularly if you have a battery that you've built yourself, um, you'll want to change the settings in the BMS. Uh, now, you can just plug and play, but it's you're probably going to have um, you know a, a bigger chance of having an alarm um, and the battery just not working the way it should with your inverter if you don't uh, change the appropriate settings. Um, I will add a BMS uh, studio video um, when I get a chance to do that. I've had a PC issues, I have a new PC on order, I'm gonna you know build that and then I'll be able to you know put videos out there a little bit more easily than what I'm working on at the moment. But anyway, I'm kind of going off topic. Let me just go into the settings here and, and show you where I am. Um, so you can see that I'm producing, let's say two and a half kilowatts of solar. The house is using two, nothing is going into the battery and the excess is going into the grid. So that's the first uh, setting that has been changed there. My reasons for changing that, I'll explain a little bit later on in the video. Let's get on with it. So we're gonna press enter. You don't need to go into information. You don't need to go into settings. You don't need to go into advanced information. You're gonna go straight to advanced settings. Okay. So your password is 0010. So down for zero, down for zero, up for one, and that's already zero. So we'll just press enter. Now, there are three settings that you're gonna to want to go into here. The first one is your select standard. Second one is your baud rate. And the third one is storage energy setting. So I'm gonna start off with select standard, enter. The standard I've set here for the Republic of Ireland is the EN50549IE. So IE is Ireland, right. You will need to select the correct standard for your region and your country. There are about 50 of these, and some countries have multiple settings. So I'll show you here. There's Vietnam, that's the first one down. Uh, don't know, that's ESB Micro. So again, that's another Irish setting. ESB Mini, another Irish setting. And there's another one down here as well. People asked about why not the 38 IA. Um, I don't know is the honest answer. Uh, again, other channels will explain this in, in more detail if you have a hankering for more information. But the information that I'm showing you here is basically just the information that you need to get things up and running, right? So if you want it working, this is a good video to watch. If you want to understand this, maybe another channel is better for you. 
Um, so let's just skip the storage here. And as I said, we're going to go into the baud rate. Right. Again, you don't need to understand even what this is. So on your BMS um, settings, you will have a baud rate in order to get in um, to the um, in, in, into the settings on your BMS which is contained in, in, the, in your battery case here, or if it's a real DIY battery, it's just mounted somewhere, um, you know, on a piece of wood uh, or lying on the battery. Um, but in my case, it's 19,200. That was the recommended baud rate to select. There are only three available here anyway uh, on this particular inverter. So if I select enter here, it brings me across to my baud rate, 19,200. The other options are 9,600, which was what the default baud rate was, on the BMS that I had to change. And it was also the default baud rate on this inverter. So I had to change it, not to the 9,600, not to the 38,400, but to the 19,200. Make sure your baud rate matches, that's all. The other stuff, didn't touch it. Now let's get out of here. I didn't make any changes, so I'm gonna select cancel and exit and I don't need to go in anywhere else there. So let's go back down to storage energy set and here we are. So there are a couple of parameters within here. This this is the main menu here for you, all right? Because there are a couple of things that you want to that you want to check out. So go into the control parameters. You want to make sure that your backup supply is uh, enabled. Um, I don't even know why that needs to be enabled, to be honest. Um, but I've been told that it needs to be enabled, so I've put it on enabled. Um, my charge and discharge uh, limitations are both set to 100 amps. Um, they were, I think, by default set to something like 90. I put them at 95, and now I've set them to 100 um, to get the most out of it. Right, so let's back out of here. I haven't changed any settings. You want to go down to battery select. This is another important one here, right? So this, in the last video, this is the one that I changed to AOBO. -O. Now, somebody who had um, asked for information on one of the um, DIY solar forums, um, where I said AOBO -O is what you need to what you need to select, um, he came back and told me that he had a battery fail warning, um, so he couldn't use AOBO, -O, even though he actually has the exact same battery as me, and. Uh, I believe he has the exact same inverter as me, uh, or at least it's a Solus uh, five kilowatt hybrid inverter. I don't know if he has the exact model. However, they basically work the same. And I suspect that the reason why he got the battery fail was because he hasn't yet gone in and changed any of the settings on the BMS uh, in BMS Studio. So this uh, particular battery is BMS version three, and it has the active balancer uh, in there as well. So you need to kind of go in and change whatever uh, settings that you need to change here appropriately. All right, so funny enough, when he told me that he had the battery fail, uh, I came out and something strange had happened to mine, uh, perhaps for a different reason. Uh, I'll go into that in just a moment, but as you can see, um, I have user defined selected here. Uh, I did have AOBO. There are a number of different ba battery settings. So there's the AOBO, that's what I had. I changed mine to user defined. Some solar enthusiasts will tell you not to use user defined, um, that it's, you know, it's not set up for, uh, you know, home, home batteries and whatever. Um, I don't think that's true in the, in the modern sense of the word because, um, this setting was originally for your, uh, your lead acid batteries, which you're not supposed to discharge down below 50%. So user defined gives you a greater sense of control over the types of batteries that you're using. Now it's more or less just kind of plug and play. User defined is absolutely fine. Your BMS will look after the rest of the um, details here. So user defined is perfectly fine to use there. All right. In the BMS for this particular battery, uh, you're going to want to select, I think it's Pylon or Plyon Tech, um, whatever's closest. Um, but that's what I have said here. So user defined, there we are. So I have my battery um, capacity is 305 amperes. Um, I might have said 315 amperes in the last video, I'm not sure, um, but that was incorrect if I did. It's 305 amperes, that's my capacity. My over voltage I have set at 57. Uh, my floating charge is set at 56 and my equalization at 55.7. Uh, 
I've just set that at 55.7 just because it's slightly below the floating charge. And what tends to happen here is my battery will charge to, sorry, this is my watch speaking. Um, what will happen there is my battery will charge to 98.5% and then it's considered fully charged. And what happens there is I don't get any over voltage alarms on the battery. I hadn't been getting any over voltage alarms on the inverter, but I was getting them on the battery when I had these set more closely together. So these are the settings I have now. My battery will discharge to 15%. Then it'll stop powering the house. If it falls um, down to 10%, it'll force charge it from the grid, regardless of the price of energy at the time. So those are the settings that I've changed here. Um, my discharge depth, as you can see, 85%. So it'll charge 80, uh, discharge 85% of the battery, which will bring it down to the 15. And my overcharge state of charge is at 95%. Right, so let's get out of here. I haven't made any changes, so I'll cancel and exit, and we'll escape user defines. And you won't need to go and change your meter set. If your if your inverter has been set up properly, um, it'll already be set to single phase or three phase, so you shouldn't need to change that. Uh, storage mode select, right? You can go to battery wake up, I've, um, you know, gone to battery wake up a number of times and woken up the battery it hasn't really done anything so i'm not really sure exactly what that does so we don't even need to go into that you can go down battery wake up and it's woken up it's done okay great stuff we want to go into storage mode select i have mine now set at feed in priority that's what i was saying earlier when the solar is being generated um any excess will go directly into the grids and won't go into the battery. The battery will supplement the house when there's less solar than what the house actually needs. There's me pointing more or less at a blank screen. So uh, let's just go in here, feed in priority. That's what I have here. If you want um, self-use, so if you go here and you select self-use, any excess solar will go to charge the battery, but I have mine set at feed in priority and I'm gonna leave it that way for now. All right, so time of use. Again, you want to leave that in at run. I have my charge limit and discharge limit at 100 amps. And you'll notice here, um, this has changed from the last time or, or from the last video. Okay. This is the point of the video where I'd say, okay, everything's set up here. You'll set up your timers and you'll escape. So you want to set up your charge time. This, this is the time that your battery will charge, right? So let's just say two o'clock to six o'clock. Your battery will charge between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. It will not discharge anything while the battery is in a charge time. So if you set your battery to charge from 2 a.m. until 2 p.m., even if your battery is fully charged, it won't release any energy until 2 p.m. So please, please bear that in mind. Whatever your charge time is, your battery will not discharge. So if you want your battery to discharge, let's say from 8 a.m., even though it's fully charged, let's say from two to five, um, but you don't want it discharging into your car, for example, which is what happened to me last night, um, you'll want to set your discharge time um, to around uh, eight o'clock. The other way around it, in my circumstance, would be to set the charge timers on your car. Um, so in my case, 2 uh, two a.m. To, to 6 a.m. my cars will charge and they will stop charging or at least one of them will. My Nissan Leaf has the ability to have a start charge time and a stop charge time um, but my Tesla doesn't. It has a start charge time but it doesn't seem to have a stop charge time. Um, the other way around is to obviously set your charger as the main thing. So I have a Hypervolt uh, 2.0 and what I can do is I can set it that it will only charge the cars at the times that I select. So in this case, again, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Why 2 a.m. or 2 a.m. to 6 a.m.? I'm with Energia. Uh, they have a they have a um, a tariff where you can get really cheap electricity, which is about seven and a half cents. Um, 
between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. After that, don't quote me on this, but it's around about 35 uh, cent. So what I'll be doing is I'll be charging my vehicles between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. on a really, really cheap rate, and I'll be charging up the battery on the really cheap rate. So I'll get 15 uh, kilowatt hours into this, uh, or 16, give or take, and the battery will then basically run the house for the rest of the day with, with the solar. Okay, so these are your charge times and your discharge times. If you want to dump power um, from your battery into the grid, you'll set your discharge time. You have three discharge times here, so you might want to dump it, let's say, just before two o'clock, right? So you'll set it from, uh, let's dump dump the last of the power from uh, 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. and, you know, get, get, get paid export for that. Or you might have a really expensive rate during the day, um, let's say between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then you'll set the second discharge time and you'll discharge um, during those times if you are paid a higher export rate. There's no point in discharging between um, 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. unless the export rate is actually higher than your usual export rate uh, later on in the evening. Otherwise, you can just set a longer discharge time, let's say from midnight to 2 a.m. So I suppose what I'm trying to point out here is that you have great control over here, three different charge times and three different discharge times, and you need to set your charge and discharge times to whatever suits your needs, okay? So that's pretty much it there. Um, why have I set to 201? Well, I want to make sure that I am actually at the right time, just in case this clock is slightly off. Make sure that I am in the cheap rate and make sure that I stop uh, charging the cars and the batteries um, just before I go into the expensive times. So let's exit here. I haven't made any changes, so I'm just going to cancel and exit. And you want to allow charging from grid. So make sure that you've highlighted charging from, from grid and that you allow it. And then we'll go back out here. Okay, guys, those are all the settings that you need to be aware of. So just to reiterate here, if the house requires only let's say 0.4 units here, I'm producing uh, nearly two uh, kilowatts. The rest is going to the grid and the battery will supplement the house when the solar is not uh, producing enough, right? Why am I down at 47%? Um, my Tesla <laughs> didn't finish charging at 6 a.m. So the battery then started to discharge um, at what, 5, um, 59, and it brought my battery down to probably around 60% or so. So the battery is feeding the Tesla um, five units and the rest was coming uh, from the grid. It would have been charging at seven kilowatts. So it was taking two uh, kilowatts from the grid and it would have been taking five kilowatts from the battery, uh, depleting my battery significantly. If you want to charge your battery from the sun, all you have to do is you go into your advanced settings um, you can go from your user defined um, and you can uh, not your user defined, sorry, uh, from your feed and priority and you can change it back to self use. And what would ha then happen here is this 1.74 would be deducted by the, let's say, three and you'd end up getting to you know, 1.3, uh, 1 1.4 going into the battery based on these units here. So this video is a little bit longer than I expected, but I went into more uh, detail um, than maybe I planned, and I hope this has been useful. Any questions, uh, drop them below in the comments. Uh, please uh, like this video. I've taken um, you know quite a bit of time out to make it for you. So if it's been useful, um, you know, throw a like in there. And if you've any uh, comments, throw them down below. If you have any questions, throw them down below. I'll be happy to answer if I can. So thanks for watching, guys. Look after yourselves. See you in the next one.